Once it's there, it's probably been there for four to six years, and it's already got a footprint. Unfortunately, the spread of emerald ash borer is seemingly inevitable and very quick. We can lose 50 to hundreds and hundreds of trees a year. Let's start with how it got here. The emerald ash borer, or EAB, is an exotic beetle native to Asia. It was first discovered in the U.S. in 2002 near Detroit, Michigan. Experts believe the beetle most likely arrived on solid woodpacking materials from a cargo ship or airplane. Since then, it has spread to more than 33 states, including Iowa. It was first detected in the Hawkeye State in 2010. Currently, 65 of Iowa's 99 counties have a confirmed infestation. And according to DNR officials, it will continue to spread until it's in all 99 counties. It's just a matter of time. It's not that the beetle itself travels great distances. Rather, it hitchhikes. It can move through firewood, could jump on trucks, trains, all kinds of different things. So humans, we're the ones that are actually moving it because it only flies probably one mile to maybe three miles a year. So why is the city just now talking about this? Well, we're not. City forestry staff stopped planting ash trees back in 2004 once we learned about this beetle. The department stopped planting ash trees nearly 15 years ago, but to this day it's still the second most common tree in Iowa City. And as expected, the beetle eventually surfaced here. In 2014, an adult beetle was found on the property of a private residence. There were no signs of feeding or reproduction though, so it wasn't declared an official infestation. That didn't happen until two years later in 2016, when it was confirmed in a group of ash trees on the University of Iowa campus. Since then, we have been seeing more ash trees that are infested, and we have been seeing signs and symptoms of infestation. So how can such a little beetle cause such a big problem? It's small, but quite destructive. The real problem isn't caused by the adult beetles, but rather during its life cycle. The eggs are laid on the outside of the bark where they hatch. The young larvae then burrow underneath the bark, and that's where the invasive bug begins causing problems. It feeds on the vascular system of the tree and disrupts the transpiration of nutrients. Without the ability to properly transport water and nutrients to its limbs, the tree begins to die off. If you can think of it as like tiny little holes being poked into your veins and not being able to get blood and oxygen to your limbs. Take this ash for example. These pictures were taken by our forestry staff while checking out a tree on Davenport Street that showed signs of an infestation. It's rare to actually witness the beetle exiting the tree like this, but it always leaves a distinct mark that is easy to recognize. There was a beetle inside there. It emerged as an adult, and the shape of the adult's head makes that classic D shape on the outside of the bark. These marks aren't nearly as graphic as what has taken place underneath the tree's protective layer. When we peel back the bark and we see these S-shaped or serpentine galleries, that's basically where we see the larvae feeding on the inner cambium layer of the tree. It's estimated that the beetle first entered our community about five years ago, which would explain why not many trees have died off yet. And there isn't much loss at, at all because it takes a pretty good large population to really start losing trees quickly. But year after year, the beetle continues to reproduce and grow in numbers, causing more and more issues. We say it's just starting here, but it's more than just starting. If we've got trees already dying, we're, we're in that five to 10 year range now. In the next five or so years, we're gonna see some pretty massive death. So if the city doesn't react, they could end up with hundreds and hundreds of dead trees all over the place. So they have to actively stay on top of it. So the city is using its recently completed database to check on high risk trees. From the ground, this ash doesn't look too bare, but an eagle eye view provides a different picture a thinning of the crown structure or the upper canopy of a tree and it's looking like it's defoliated or doesn't have a lot of leaves, that is one sign and symptom. And to make up for the lack of growth up top, the tree will try to compensate. Epicormic growth or offshoots of exponential growth at the kind of mid-level of the tree, that really tells us that something is stressing out the tree and it's trying to grow as much leaves as it can to try and stay alive and make photosynthetic material to stay alive. When staff identifies a tree with emerald ash borer, they are taking no risks. We check those to confirm if they are infested. If they are, then we do remove those. One might wonder, why not wait until a tree completely dies off before taking it down? When they're completely dead, the thing with ash, it's a very brittle wood. And once they die, they become a risk pretty quickly. We look at safety first and foremost. So it becomes a public safety hazard when those trees are still in the air with large limbs that are dead. Another option the city is looking into is treating the trees before they are infested. 
There are chemical treatment options to potentially preserve healthy ash trees. So they can use that as a stopgap to kind of slow the loss. But this kind of treatment cannot reverse any damage that's already been done. The common misconception is that chemically treating these trees will help grow back dead material or dead branches. That is not the case. The last step the city is taking may be the most important. Replanting at nearly twice the rate as trees are being removed, the city is taking steps towards a healthy future. Our goal is to replant the urban forest with a more diverse mix of tree species so it's more resilient when the next tree pest comes along. You may be wondering, what can I do to help? As we mentioned, the spread of EAB is mostly caused by humans. Firewood is believed to be the most common way this beetle gets around. So remember, burn it where you buy it. Keep an eye on the health of any ash trees on your property. Watch for the signs of the emerald ash borer and get a professional opinion if you have any concerns. And remember, this infestation affects us all. People like Mark and Zach got into this business to protect our natural resources, not harm them. What motivates me and why I made the decision to make this my profession is for my love of trees. I've spent half my life trying to learn about, understand, and better care for trees. But faced with the spread of the EAB, reality can be a tough pill to swallow. If we already have the boar, we're already starting to see loss, the ball is already rolling, so they're going to continue to lose trees. By being vigilant and planning for the future, we hope to face this issue head on and ensure a stable future for our urban forest. You know, we have the great responsibility and honor of being able to care for our trees. And I love trees, and so does this community, and they are a great resource, and that's why our work is important.